Hey everybody, my name is Matthew Rathbone. I'm one of the co-creators of Beekeeper Studio, which is a SQL editor and database manager for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Totally open source. Um, I'm here to show you version 1.7. I've got some great new features for you today. Let's start off with the little things. Okay, so I'm going to connect to a Postgres database. Um, and the first little thing I want to show you is uh, something that a few people have asked for, and that's the ability to cancel a running query. So in here, I've got a query, it sleeps for 50 seconds. We don't really want that, we can cancel it. And that'll actually cancel the query running on the database. That's one little thing. Um, <clears throat> another improvement to this query editor screen is a lot of times you want to select some data, chuck it in an Excel spreadsheet or just put it in a form or just you want to do something simple with it. Um, a lot of cases you want to copy just one value but um, maybe you want to copy the whole table. So we've added a copy to clipboard button to the download. So now you can copy it, you can paste it. When you paste this into Excel or Google Sheets it'll prompt you to tell it how to separate it. So this is tab separated. Super useful. Okay great. Um, the last thing is just a couple of minor minor touches here. We've added some nice icons and some information about total records. And we've done the same thing with the table view. So let me show you some of the improvements to the table view. Oh, actually, one last little improvement is we have a right-click menu. You can format your queries now. I know a lot of you asked for that. If you're pasting a query from an, uh, an ORM, it's nice to be able to format it. So I think that'll be very helpful for a lot of people. And most of these little features, by the way, are from the community. So thank you if you're one of the people who contributed. Moving on to the table view, so if you click this little icon, you can view the table. Um, there's a whole bunch of changes here. So again, I'll start with the small stuff. We now identify primary keys and foreign keys in your tables. We tell you how many records are in the table and how long it's been since you updated this view. So this will change to a minute or 10 minutes or however long it's been until since this screen has been refreshed. Um, the next thing we've added, which is slightly bigger, is Whenever you have a foreign key column, we add a little jump out. So um, in this case, this references the country table and the country ID of the country table, which is the primary key. And so now we can just click this icon, boom, and jump to country with ID 107. And because we have a tabbed interface, you, you can do this a bunch of times. So this is 103, this version is 49, and so on and so forth. Uh, we've also added, because we've been doing this a lot, um, if you're filtering by primary key, we show the primary key in the tab, um, which makes it really easy to see which country you have open in which tab. If you clear this, it'll tell you you've got all countries open. And if you add some random filter, let's say uh, greater than one, it'll just tell you that it's filtered. So this is a really easy way of seeing what you have open in each tab. The next major feature we have, and this is a biggie, um, super excited to show you is table editing. So now you can come in here and edit a table. So in this case, I think I've got this city name wrong. Um, let's just change it. I think that's got an E on the end of it. I think this has an I on the end of it. And every change you make gets staged and we indicate that with a yellow box. And then at the bottom, you can either commit those edits, save them to the database or discard them. In this case, let's save these changes. They went green. That means the save was successful. And you can tell, in our case, because these uh, updated values in the database changed as well. So when we update a row, we'll fetch back the new values and repopulate your table. Um, if you do something wrong here, and you click Commit, you'll get a little red box that tells you it's wrong. And if you hover over here, you'll see that there's an error, and it'll give you the error. So here, foo is not a valid small integer, so that wasn't going to save correctly. So you know what, let's just discard that change. I think that was a mistake. All right, so that is one big, big change. And this works across all supported databases. So right now we're on Postgres. I can jump into SQLite. This is Beekeeper's actual database here, right? So we have Beekeeper's actual database. We can go in here and change these values as well. Don't want to do that. It works on SQLite, it works on MySQL, it works on Redshift, it works on CockroachDB, it works across the board. It works on SQL Server. So we're very excited to push that feature live. I know a lot of you have been waiting for it. A um, couple of extra little 
niceties, we have a right click menu on tabs so that now you can close all the other tabs and leave that tab open or just close that single tab um, or duplicate a tab. So if you have a query you want to use again, you can duplicate it. Um, and finally, we have a right click menu or rather we have a new drop down on the save connection. So you can duplicate a save connection if you want to have another copy of it, or you can copy the path, which copy is kind of a URL style string of the path. Um, so I can show you what that looks like. If paste that. So for a SQLite database, it is the path of the SQLite database. If it's a MySQL, it is the URL. If it's Postgres, it is the URL. So we think all those things would be pretty useful. So that's, the, that's my high level view of version 1.7 of Beekeeper Studio. I hope you enjoy it. Um, absolutely thrilled to get table editing and foreign key lookups into your hands. Please let us know on GitHub of any questions, bug reports or feature requests. We cannot wait to hear from you. Hope you have a great day and stay safe.